We live in a time when the history books have been rewritten and God has been erased. Also, the heroes of our past, many of whom were truly great in their own time and context, have been torn down and even misrepresented. The Pilgrims of Plymouth, for example, were a group of dedicated, sincere Christians who were just trying to live out their faith. They treated others with respect, including the Native Americans, without whom, it turns out, they might not have survived. As the winter of 1621 turned to spring, an Indian man walked into the fledgling new colony. His name was Samoset, who was a friendly man, declaring, Hello, Englishman. He came back soon with another Indian who would turn out to be critical for the pilgrim's survival. His name was Squanto. And I call him the land bridge, the, the, the human bridge to Western civilization. He was a Native American who was taken to England, became a Christian, learned English, and when the pilgrims came, he was a human bridge for the, for the pilgrims to interpret and translate to the natives the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Squanto continued with them and was their interpreter and was a special instrument sent of God for their good beyond their expectation. William Bradford. Squanto taught them how to catch eel and how to grow corn. See, the soil in Plymouth is so bad, so sandy, you can't grow anything in Plymouth. So that's what he would do. He'd build a mound of sand, put four fish in it, wait two weeks for it to decompose, plant corn. The corn grows, you plant beans. The beans use the corn stalk to grow. Then they would plant cabbage, low-lying plant, that held the nitrogen in the ground and kept out the weeds. That's called combination planting, the three sisters. And, and Squanto would show the pilgrims how to do this and how to survive. So he was very instrumental in our survival. So in Squanto, of course, taught them also how to fish. So you take your shoes off, you go barefoot into Town Brook where the muck is there and you stamp your feet and when you feel something squirting there, you stamp very hard, the eel squirts up and you catch it and you fry it. What a delicious dinner. Squanto also translated for them as they negotiated a long-lasting treaty of peace with the Indians, which was signed by their chief, Massasoit. Bradford says Squanto was a, uh, an amazing vessel sent by God to help them. Um, they now have an interpreter and of course eventually have that peace treaty only a few days later with Massasoit, uh, who comes with uh, uh, several of the Indian chiefs and they, they sit down, uh, he's the chief, but they come with several warriors and they sit down and they make that uh, peace treaty uh, right here in Plymouth. If he didn't sign that peace treaty, the Pilgrims wouldn't have survived. And it lasted 55 years, but three years into that peace treaty, Massasoit was at his camp in Rhode Island. See, back then the Wampanoag lived right here in Plymouth and on Cape Cod and in New Bedford and in Rhode Island. He was chief of all of them. Now he's at his camp in Rhode Island, the man had the plague, he was dying. A gentleman from Plymouth by the name of Edward Winslow put some herbs together, and Ed Winslow walked to Rhode Island to nurse Massasoit back to health. Winslow walked 40 miles. Halfway there, he was met on a path by an Indian who told him not to bother finishing the trip. Massasoit died. Well, he finished the trip anyway, and he discovered Massasoit had not yet died. He was very close, and Ed Winslow nursed him back to health. From that day forward, they were great friends, and that peace treaty was even stronger. There's really three entities. There's the pilgrims, there's the strangers, and there's the Native Americans. And they needed to learn how to get along and, and, and in a cohesive nature when, when they came here. The Indians in that particular area had been very hostile to Europeans, yet most of them had died off in a plague that swept through there a few years before the pilgrims came. Yeah, had not the pilgrims settled in Plymouth, a lot of the tribes here were very hostile, and they would have been in trouble. But also keep this in mind, the Patuxets were hostile. Had the Patuxet Indians survived that plague, they probably would have wiped the pilgrims out. The pilgrims, who came in peace, came onto a territory that was not a barren wilderness with the need to clear all the land. There were already cultivated fields. Meanwhile, the pilgrims, being dedicated to living out their faith, made sure that they paid a fair and just price for everything. That included the land. There was not one square inch of property they purchased the chief Massasoit 
did not approve the land sale first. See, the Indians didn't want the land. They wouldn't come back on it because of the plague. The Pilgrims took land nobody wanted. Everything after that they paid for to the chief of Massasoit. And this is very important because if we cannot own property, we have absolutely no power. We have right in Plymouth all the land deeds that have been recorded and that uh, Indian chiefs gave their signature to. Uh, do you know it's interesting that all the land here, uh, William Bradford would not allow another colonist from the English to ever sign a land deed without the personal permission of Massasoit. Massasoit had to give his permission to make sure that they weren't being cheated. In later eras, European settlers as well as Americans mistreated Native Americans in grave miscarriages of justice. But in doing so, they were not at all following the example of the Pilgrims. The Pilgrims had good relationships with the Indians. The Pilgrims were kind to the Indians. They showed them love. They showed them compassion. They showed them the godly way to live. If more European settlers had been like the Pilgrims, or like the Puritan, Roger Williams, who founded Rhode Island, or like the Quaker, William Penn, the history of American relations with the Indians would have been much different. Meanwhile, the cultures clashed significantly because of their different views on religion and on land ownership, or the lack thereof, and on other worldview issues. Tragically, today, many come down hard on the pilgrims for bad things that happened to the Native Americans, when in reality, the pilgrims were exemplary in their relationships with others, including the Indians. The pilgrims followed Jesus Christ, who said, treat others as you would have them treat you. What a difference it makes when we believe in Christ and obey him. For Providence Forum, I'm Jerry Newcomb.